Hi everyone, I'm FlygonHG, and this is the video of my attempts at a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Sun using only pink Pokemon. To see what I define as hardcore Nuzlocke rules, check out the description below. But in short, no items in battle, no overleveling past the totem Pokemon before the start of the trial, and we're playing on set mode. It's almost Valentine's Day everyone! Love is in the air, meaning that stores have been outfitted in all different shades of red and pink to trick people into relationships into buying overpriced gifts for their loved ones. Or it's yet another day for people to bitterly resent the fact that they're single and are forced to seek solace in YouTube videos that single them out in the first minute of the video with a run-on sentence that gets weirdly self-aware at the end. But either way, on the next day, candy at CVS is 50% off, and that's cause for celebration. So let's celebrate with a Valentine's Day-themed Nuzlocke of Pokemon Sun using only pink Pokemon. Did you know that every single Pokemon in the game is classified in the Pokedex by a single specific color? Although there are a lot of Pokemon that have some pink aspects in their design, there are only 57 Pokemon that are classified specifically as pink Pokemon. Most of these make sense, though there is at least one questionable omission. But in order to keep things objective, I use these 57 Pokemon as my potential encounters for this pink Pokemon only Hardcore Nuzlocke. Not all of them can be found in Pokemon Sun, but a good deal of them can, so this run should have a pretty diverse set of encounters. I haven't played Pokemon Sun since it was first released, and a lot of these encounters are Pokemon that I have never used before, so this should be pretty fun. Just as a quick reminder before we start, I play with Species Claws, so I'll be able to reroll encounters until I get a unique encounter, but I can only use one of each unique evolution line. Okay, let's see how this goes. The challenge begins with a brutal reminder of why I haven't replayed these games. There are an obscene amount of cutscenes and just random required stuff that I have to do right off the bat. But honestly, with a little bit of speed up magic, it doesn't take that long until I get to choose my starter. Now you may think that none of these starters are pink, but the Poplio that I choose is actually a Love Disk in disguise, who will be the starter for this challenge. I named Love Disk B Mine, and after an easy battle with our rival Howe, who chose Litten, B Mine and I begin our whirlwind journey to find love. And by finding love, I mean not dying and becoming Pokemon champions. There's actually immediately another encounter that I can get from Route 1, a Slowpoke. So I catch him and name him Crazy For You. Unfortunately, Slowpoke is quite terrible, so without making Love Disk my starter, this challenge would be completely impossible with level caps, since the Totem Gum Shoes in the first trial knows Bite, and there's really nothing little Slowpoke can do about it. With Be Mine, I have a much better chance of beating the first Totem and making it off the first island, where more encounters await. But unfortunately, I don't even get to the totem Pokemon, because the head of the trainer school, Teacher Emily, has a Magnevity, which completely devastates my two little water types. Sun and Moon have a lot of these random, surprisingly difficult battles, and since I've only played them once, a lot of them catch me completely off guard. Well, after going through all those cutscenes again, I get back to choosing my starter. This time, I decide to pick Rowlet, who is also a Love Disk in disguise. I also make sure to reset attempts until I get a Love Disk with a Nature and IVs that might make the Magnemity a little more manageable. But since I chose Rowlet, my rival now has a Poplio, which is a bit harder to take down in our first face-off. But fortunately, it appears that Howe is coded to completely throw this fight. The main reason I chose Rowlet this time is so that the first trial captain, Alima, has a Smeargle who knows Ember instead of Lafage, which I realized would probably make that fight nearly impossible. But before getting there, I need to defeat this wall of a Magnemity. Fortunately, on Route 1, I'm able to load up B-Mine with as many EVs and HP and Special Defense as I can before he hits level 11 so that he's able to ever so slightly better tank Magnemity's Thundershocks. This lets me knock out Magnemity with a few water guns and survive the Thundershocks, barring any critical hits or paralysis. So, last is Meowth, but thanks to Draining Kiss, we're able to gain enough HP back to survive an attack and then finish it off on the next turn. The first obstacle of the challenge has been cleared. Next up is a fight against the Trial Captain Alima, who has a fairly tough team for us to handle. And since the current level cap is based on the Totem Pokémon's level, I can't afford to be any higher level than I already am. Alima leads with a Young Goose, meaning that Crazy For You is once again totally useless here. Fortunately, Be Mine is able to handle him well enough by using Charm to lower his attack, and then just slowly taking him out with Draining Kisses. Draining Kiss has the benefit of healing us as well, so the only way that this goes wrong is if Young Goose gets a few critical hits. It takes a long time because Alima heals the Young Goose, but after many, many turns, we manage to knock out the Young Goose. Smeargle is last, so I hit a charm to lower its attack. But because Young Goose got off two Leers, and Love Disk has as much defense as you'd think it would based on its soft, squidgy body, he still does a good chunk of damage. So I switch to Crazy For You and tank another tackle. Then I go for a Yawn as I tank another tackle. And then I switch back to Be Mine, tank a much more manageable tackle, and then Smeargle falls asleep. 
but then Alima uses a full heal like a freaking cheater, so I just start chugging away with Draining Kisses to stay healthy. Smeargle does get a critical hit at one point, which is pretty scary, but Draining Kisses recover enough HP where Be Mine is able to hold on and finish off the Smeargle, winning us the battle. Now it's time to face the Totem Gumshoes in the first island trial. Unfortunately, because of the number of mandatory fights prior to fighting the Totem Gumshoes, and needing to be at a certain level to beat Emily's Magnemity, and the way that XP is handled in these games, there is no feasible way for us to get to Gumshoes with Bee Mine under the level cap. The best I can do is have Bee Mine at the level cap at the start of the trial. He does, however, ultimately gain a level during the preliminary fights of the trial. For the sake of actually continuing this challenge, which is still pretty tough, I decide to let this slide here, with the understanding that making the rule be that the level cap is in effect until the start of the trial is similar to how in other games the level cap is in effect until the start of the gym battle. I know it's not exactly the same, but it'll have to do. Regardless, this will be the only trial where that actually matters. I start the battle with Be Mine, who gets off a charm to lower Gumshoes' attack. Gumshoes then goes for a scary face, and then calls an ally Young Goose. Fortunately, Be Mine is still faster than both the Gumshoes and the Young Goose even after the scary face, so I get off a strong draining kiss into the Young Goose before Gumshoes uses another scary face, and Young Goose uses a leer. On the next turn, I tank a hard bite from Gumshoes and a hard tackle from Young Goose, but a held Orenberry and a draining kiss make me regain almost all of my health. So Gumshoes then goes for a Super Fang. Young Goose hits another leer, and then another draining kiss finishes off the Young Goose, making this a much more manageable 1v1. Thanks to the double leers, I decide to switch out to Crazy For You, who tanks a non-critical hit Bite. Then I stay in to hit a Yawn, risking another crit from Bite. Then I risk yet another one to stay in and get off a small amount of damage with Water Gun as the Gumshoes falls asleep. This gives me a safe switch back into Be Mine. From here, I just start hammering away with Draining Kiss. Unfortunately, I only have a few Draining Kiss PP remaining because I had to use a handful of them against the other trial Pokémon. So I do have to switch to Water Gun. But now with Gumshoes in the red, I just need to hit one more Water Gun. But then Gumshoes flinches with Bite. This could be bad. But on the next turn, Gumshoes hits another Bite, and we survive with exactly 1 HP, avoid the flinch, and finish off the Gumshoes, winning the first island trial by the skin of our teeth. But my victory celebration is short, because immediately after beating the first island trial, I accidentally run into Rising Star Tatiana on Route 3, who has a Patilil with Mega Drain, who wipes both of my water types. Okay, well it's time for another series of resets until I find a halfway decent love disc that is able to take on Teacher Emily's Magnemity, Alima's Young Goose and Smeargle, and the Totem Gumshoes. All the way on attempt 13, I'm able to get back to where we wiped. This time, I don't accidentally run into the corporeal form of Satan, which lets me get to Mele Mele Meadow. There, I catch an Oricorio. In her current form, she's not a pink Pokémon, so I can't use her right now. But once I'm able to use Pink Nectar to turn her into her Pau'u style, she'll join the team. For now, Soulmate just goes in the box. After that, I successfully navigate back to Iki Town, where I take on the first Grand Trial, a fight against Hala and his fighting types. Fortunately, with Charm to lower their attack, Lucky Chant to prevent critical hits, and Draining Kiss to gain HP back, this fight is pretty hard to lose with Be Mine as long as I'm patient and smart about it. I start by charming Hala's Mankey as I take a big chunk from Karate Chop. Then I take a smaller chunk from a second Karate Chop and set up a Lucky Chant. Then, with a few Draining Kisses, we finish off the Mankey as I recover back to full health. Makuhita comes out next. It flinches with a Fake Out to start. But then I just charm it down and it hits a Sand Attack. Then I set up a Lucky Chant and Makuhita uses another Sand Attack. So I decide to switch to Crazy For You on a super weak arm thrust. Then I use Yawn as Makuhita goes for more sand attacks. I stay in for another turn and hit a Confusion so that Makuhita falls asleep. Then it's back to be mine as he snoozes. Then I set up a Lucky Chant and Makuhita stays asleep. And then it's Draining Kisses. Fortunately, Makuhita decides to not use sand attacks after it wakes up, so be mine is happy and healthy with no sand in their eyes as Crabrawler comes out. So I use Charm on it on the first turn. And thankfully I did, because it hits a Fighting-type Z-move on Little Bee Mine for an embarrassingly small amount of damage. Our Lucky Chant wears off though, so I set up another one as Kerbrawler goes for a Power-Up Punch. I have to be a little careful here, because Power-Up Punch is giving him attack boosts, but as long as I click Charm every now and then, it's pretty safe to whittle away at Kerbrawler with Draining Kisses. And Kerbrawler just starts going for Leers anyways, so with my last Draining Kiss PP, we knock him out, netting us a clean win. And with that, I've finally finished everything I need to do on Melee Melee Island, meaning that I can finally move on to the next island, catch a bunch of new and diverse encounters, and continue on with this challenge. But as soon as I get to Akala Island, I have to fight Dexio, whose stupid Espeon wipes my two dumb weaklings. 
So it's back to Nightmare Island for another handful of resets until I hit attempt 18. This time, before I leave for Akala Island, I decide to catch one more encounter, a Happiny from Haoli City. In previous attempts, I didn't bother going through the trouble of getting a Happiny at this point because it involves a pretty tedious process of getting Pichu to call one as an SOS partner, and Happiny is virtually useless for the first island trial and the grand trial since all of those Pokémon are physical attackers. However, Sweet Pea is a perfect counter to Dexio's special attacking Espeon, especially because Sweet Pea was holding an Oval Stone when I caught her, meaning that I'm able to immediately evolve her into a Chansey and then a Blissey. With that, I now have a Pokémon that almost single-handedly trivializes any special attackers, thanks to its immense vessel bulk and access to recovery via Softboiled. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately for viewers who like drama, almost none of the totem Pokémon are exclusively special attackers, so Sweet Pea is very useless for large portions of this playthrough. Still though, Blissey is a phenomenal Pokémon and makes some battles that would otherwise be insanely difficult much, much more manageable. For example, I am now able to easily defeat Texio and finally get out of the early game purgatory that I've been stuck in for 18 attempts. This lets me go to Route 4, where I find an Eevee. I catch him and name him Cutie Pie. And then, after playing with him via Pokémon Refresh until his affection gets to two hearts, he is able to evolve into Sylveon. Based on my research, two hearts of affection isn't enough to trigger those game-breaking effects of Pokémon Refresh where Pokémon can avoid moves and heal themselves of status conditions and so on. The only difference is that Cutie Pie gains EXP slightly faster. Sylveon is a phenomenal Pokémon that can use Stab Fairy types to devastate large portions of the game, so I'm glad I have access to one. After that, I head to Paniola Ranch and catch a Miltank. I name her Say Yes, and she becomes the fifth member of the team, which is now starting to look much, much better than it did just a few minutes ago. And finally, for my sixth team member, I go to Route 5 and catch an adorable little Fomantis. I name her Lovebug. She's quite weak right now, but once she evolves into Lurantis, she'll be a solid powerhouse. Oh, and she comes with a Miracle Seed, so that's cool. That gets us to the second island trial, where I have to fight a very intimidating schooling form Wishiwashi. But fortunately, this Wishiwashi is one of the few totems that is an exclusively special attacker. So Sweet Pea is able to just sit there and shrug off water guns as she whittles it down with Echoed Voice, which increases in power with consecutive uses. So it's not too long until she's able to knock out the totem Wishiwashi, as well as the ally Wishiwashi, winning us an easy trial. Look how happy Sweet Pea is. What an absolutely busted Pokémon. From here, the game really picks up in speed. We start ripping through island trials. Before getting to Kiawe's trial though, I get an Alamomala from Brooklet Hill and name her Angel. I've never actually used this Pokémon, so I was pretty excited to get to use it, until I realized that it's not that great other than for Wish Passing, which it doesn't learn for several more level caps. I also catch an Iglybuff from Route 6 and name him Sweet Stuff. For now, Sweet Stuff goes into the Cold Dark Box, but we'll get him later. I also get some Pink Nectar from Royal Avenue and transform Soulmate into her Pau form, so she's able to join the rotation as well. Now it's time for Kiawe's trial. After a short series of battles that B-Mind tears through with Water Z moves, I have to take on the Totem Salazzle. I start by leading with B-Mine, who tanks a Flame Burst and then sets up a Lucky Chant to prevent critical hits for our team. Then Salazzle calls a Salandite in. So I switch to Say Yes, who becomes subject to a Torment, and then also a Taunt. Then she just shrugs off a Flame Burst thanks to her Thick Fat ability and hits a Rock Tomb on Salazzle to lower her speed. Salandite uses Poison Gas to poison her, but a Held Petra Berry cures the poison. So on the next turn, I hit a Stomp on Salazzle, which does activate her Pattaya Berry to raise her special attack, but thanks to Lucky Chance, Say Yes is completely safe here. Next, I switch to Angel, who kinda tanks a Flame Burst and a Venoshock, as our Lucky Chant wears off. But an Aqua Jet finishes off the Salazzle. After that, we get hit by a Taunt from the Lingering Salandite. And then on the next turn, I drown the little simp with a Water Z move, winning us the third island trial. With that, I can go to Route 9 and catch yet another Pokémon I have never used before, a Stuffle. I name her Hug Me. Hug Me will make a great addition to the team once she evolves into Beware thanks to her fluffy ability giving her fantastic physical bulk. But before I can evolve her, we have to take on Mallow's Island Trial. The Totem Lorantis here is arguably one of the hardest Totem Pokémon in the game, you know, assuming you don't have a Zubat, which I don't. But I do have a somewhat solid plan that involves at worst sacking Be Mine, who after getting out of the early game has become pretty useless. I start by leading Soulmate, who tanks an X-Scissors, and then lowers Lorantis' attack with a Feather Dance. Lorantis then calls Trumbeak, which has Rock Blast. So on the next turn, Lorantis hits another X-Scissors, which thankfully doesn't crit, and then our Citrus Berry activates, and Soulmate uses Baton Pass, allowing me to switch to Hug Me without getting hit by Lorantis. Though unfortunately, she still gets hit by a pretty hard pluck from Trumbeak, since I think the AI thinks that Rock Blast only has 25 base power. Honestly, it's pretty stupid to stay in here because I'm risking quite a few critical hits, but on the first turn I'm in with Hug Me, I use Protect, 
and I see that Lorantis is just going for Solar Blade. The Protect wastes her Power Herb, so it seems like the next turn she will just go for a two-turn Solar Blade. This means that it's somewhat safe to get off a Priority Baby Doll Eyes into Trumbeak to lower its attack. But instead of going for Solar Blade, Lorantis goes for Razor Leaf, which crits. So, like so many other budding relationships, Hug Me's journey ends before it even got a chance to get going. I bring out Say Yes next, and then Lorantis charges up a Solar Beam. So I hit Lorantis with a Rock Tomb to get rid of one of its two speed boosts, and then Trumbeak plucks away my Person Berry. Lorantis still outspeeds on the next turn and hits a Solar Blade, which does a good chunk of damage. Then Say Yes hits a strong Body Slam, and Trumbeak misses a Supersonic. That's what you get for eating my Person Berry, you dumb bird. Lorantis charges up another Solar Beam, so Say Yes takes the opportunity to pour herself a glass of her own milk and drink it, and then Trumbeak hits a weak Pluck. So Solar Blade connects again for another chunk of damage, and we lower Lorantis' speed again with a Rock Tomb. And then Trumbeak connects with a Supersonic. So now I have to switch to Cutie Pie. Lorantis uses Synthesis, and Trumbeak misses a Screech. Then I go for a workup as Lorantis charges up a Solar Blade, and the legally blind Trumbeak misses another Supersonic. I work up again here, tank a Solar Blade, and avoid yet another Supersonic. Then I just start going for Draining Kisses. Thanks to the boost from Workup, a few Draining Kisses are enough to knock off the Lorantis, and Cutie Pie's Big Root keeps us pretty healthy. We were obviously risking critical hits from Solar Blade there, but there's really nothing that I could have done about that. Once the Lorantis goes down, Trumbeak finally manages to connect with a Supersonic. So I do have to switch back to say yes on a Screech, and then Milk Drink to be safe. Then I hit a Rock Tomb, but it isn't enough for the one shot, so Trumbeak hits another Supersonic, so, I switch back to Cutie Pie, who finally knocks off the Trumbeak with a Draining Kiss, winning us the 4th Island Challenge. That didn't really go how I expected it to go, and it really sucks to lose Hug Me so soon after getting her. But sometimes people only come into your life for a short time. That doesn't make the moments that we spend with them any less special. It's important to remember that no matter how short of a time we get, we experience an infinite number of moments together. And it is those moments that we must hold on to. Hug Me, your absence will be unbearable but you will be remembered. Rest in peace. After a period of mourning, we make our way to the second grand trial against Olivia. But first, I fish up a Corsola from Route 9. I name her True Love. Now you may think, as I once did, that Corsola is a fairly useless Pokemon. But by the end of this challenge, I promise you that I will have successfully challenged that preconceived notion. Now it's time to face Olivia and her rock types. She leads with a Nose Pass, and I lead Love Bug. I hit a Leaf Blade that does way less damage than I was expecting, and then Nosepass uses a Thunder Wave, but my Paralysis is cured by a Held Cherry Berry. So I go for another Leaf Blade to put Nosepass in the red, and then it fires off a pretty strong Rock Slide, which crits. Olivia uses a Super Potion, so I hit another Leaf Blade, but now I need to switch out to True Love, who shrugs off the Rock Slide. Then I hit Nosepass with a Brine, which also doesn't knock it out, so Nosepass gets off a Thunder Wave. On the next turn, Nosepass outspeeds to hit a Spark, so I go for a Recover. Then I switch to Cutie Pie on a Spark, which does get the Paralysis, but at least our Cute Charm activates as Instant Karma. I also still outspeed and finish off the Nose Pass with a Critical Hit Draining Kiss. That thing was way more annoying than I thought it would be. Bulldore is out next, so I stay in once to hit a strong Draining Kiss and then tank a Headbutt. Then I switch out into True Love, whose Nature Cure ability has cured her Paralysis. Then a Brine finishes off the Bulldore. Last is Lycanroc, who immediately fires off a Rock Z move that does a huge amount of damage. Thankfully, True Love just barely tanks a non-critical hit. Z-moves are insanely powerful, and they're why the move Protect is so incredibly useful in Sun and Moon playthroughs, and this battle was a good reminder of that for me. After a recover, True Love tanks a hard rock throw, and then hits Lycanroc with a brine. Not wanting to risk a crit here, I switch to Angel, who better tanks a rock throw, and then I fire off an Aqua Jet to bring Lycanroc into the red, and tank another rock throw. So, one last Aqua Jet finishes off Lycanroc, winning us the second Grand Trial. With that, we've finished up our business on Akala Island, and it's time to head to Ula Ula Island. As soon as I get there, I'm challenged by Hao, and I am absolutely unprepared for this fight. I don't have Sweet Pea with me, so his Alolan Raichu is able to almost completely eviscerate my entire team. But I do manage to eke out a win without anyone going down. There are a lot of these rival fights and mini-boss fights that are fairly challenging, but unfortunately I just don't have the time to go through all of them. These games are super long, so I can really only highlight the ones that I think are particularly important for the story. Anyways, from here, I head to Mount Hokulani where I catch a Cleffa. I name her Love Me, and she goes into the box, since she's not particularly useful until we get a Moonstone. Then it's time for Sophocles' Island Trial. But before that, I am challenged by Moilene, which I did not remember was going to happen, and I was not at all prepared for it. We don't have an amazing matchup into Steel types, so this is a pretty tricky fight. Fortunately, Angel is able to single-handedly deal with his team with a bit of lucky Water Pulse confusions, 
recovery from Aqua Ring, and her natural physical bulk. But this does cause her to overlevel to level 30, so I won't be able to use her for the next island trial. Which isn't a huge deal since Sophocles' trial involves fighting a Totem Vicavolt, which is electric type. But since Vicavolt is a physical attacker here, Angel actually isn't the worst candidate for this fight, so it does kind of suck that we can't use her. Instead, I come up with a strategy that once again plans to potentially sack Be Mine the Love Disc so that we can get off a charm. But I didn't know that you couldn't switch the order of your Pokemon or heal them once the trial started, so I walk in leading with Say Yes to take care of the first few Pokemon that you have to fight during Sophocles' audio quiz. She also loses her Cherry Berry to one of these fights. The result is that I'm forced to lead a Damage Say Yes into the Totem Vicavolt, which gets a pretty nasty Omni boost to its stats at the start of the battle. So I start by hitting a Rock Tomb to lower Vicavolt's speed. Then I have to tank a pretty hard Spark. Vicavolt then calls in a Charger Bug, which is fortunately not that threatening. I decide to stay in and just body slam the Vicavolt for a bit of damage. Then the Charger Bug hits a Thunder Wave and Vicavolt fires off another Spark. So I switch to Sweet Pea, who barely survives a Spark thanks to her immense HP stat. At this point, it's pretty clear that things are looking very bad for my team. We have a really bad matchup against Electric types, and most of our Pokemon that don't have a weakness to Electric type attacks are very physically weak. I decide that I have to make a sack here to get a safe switch into Be Mine. Crazy for You has been immensely underwhelming up until this point, and I'm due for another Water Psychic type soon anyways, so unfortunately he becomes the Sacrificial Lamb, or Sacrificial whatever animal Slowpoke is. Godspeed Crazy for You, may you start your slow ascent to heaven in peace. Well next up I bring in Be Mine and hit a charm to drop Vicavolt's attack. Time to dodge some critical heads. Be Mine does survive a spark, and though it is probably safe to let him go down, I hard switch to Cutie Pie anyways who thankfully only gets hit by a string shot and then a spark that doesn't paralyze. From here, I just start using Draining Kiss on the Vicavolt. It does a good amount of damage, and thankfully Vicavolt doesn't get any crits, so we get it pretty low before Cutie Pie has to switch out. I bring in True Love, who manages to tank another non-critical hit spark from Vicavolt. So, and perhaps this is overkill here, I use our newly learned Rock Z-Move to outspeed and knock out the Totem Vicavolt. Now I still have to deal with this Charger Bug, which does take a lot longer than I wanted it to, because it uses Thunder Wave and Mud Slap but at the very least it doesn't have an electric type move, so True Love isn't in any real danger. She goes down a few turns later. And so, with a great deal of luck, we barely survive the fifth island challenge. I cannot tell you how much easier that would have been if we had a fluffy beware. Anyways, with Crazy For You buried six feet under, it's time to get a replacement water psychic type. Fortunately, I can now get to Route 13 and fish up a Bruxish. Bruxish can have two different abilities. Strongjaw is a phenomenal ability that makes Bruxish hit like an absolute truck with psychic fangs. Its other ability, Dazzling, prevents priority moves. It's not completely useless, but Strongjaw is definitely superior. Fortunately, I can actually test what ability Bruxish has by using Aqua Jet or Baby Doll Eyes on it before catching it. If those priority moves connect, then the Bruxish has Strongjaws. The one on Route 13 ends up having Dazzling, so instead of catching it, I just run away. This way, I can fish up another Bruxish on Secluded Shore and try for Strongjaw again. But that one also has Dazzling. So I try for a third time on Route 14 and that one also, also has Dazzling. There's one more route that I can get Bruxish as an encounter, but to get to it, I do have to beat a pretty strong trainer, so I decide to wait until after the next island trial, since Bruxish wasn't gonna be much help in it anyways. Unfortunately, along the way to said island trial, I accidentally run into Collector Kawika on Route 14. He has a pretty strong Gabite, which manages to trap Angel in with a Sand Tomb during a Sandstorm, meaning that I can't switch out. And since Angel is not a very good Pokemon, I'm not able to knock out the Gabite before Sandstorm Chip and Sand Tomb Damage take her out. That's the third life that's been snuffed out now. And it was easily the most frustrating, because it was just to some random a-hole with a Flygon knockoff. But it was my fault for rushing through the game and accidentally running into this trainer. It's at this point that I decide to just take a beat and put all of my Pokemon through a crash course of EV training. A lot of the Pokemon in this game have perfect IVs and strategic EV investments, so it's time that I stop playing with a needless disadvantage. I also decide to evolve Sweet Stuff the Igglybuff, first into Jigglypuff and then into Wigglytuff with a recently acquired Moonstone. Her normal typing will make her very useful for Acerola's Island Challenge, which pits us up against a Totem Mimikyu. The Mimikyu has an Omni Boost as well, but its only non-ghost attacking move is Play Rough, which only has 10 PP. So I'm able to first lower its attack with a priority Baby Doll Eyes from Cutie Pie. Mimikyu uses Mimic and then calls a Haunter, which is also pretty useless into normal types, though it does no hypnosis. Then it's time for some protect stalling and careful switching to stall Mimikyu out of Play Rough PP. It works flawlessly, so let's just cut to the end where she can't use Play Rough anymore. This lets me safely bring in Sweet Stuff, who just whittles away at Mimikyu with Shadow Balls. And let me tell you, Sweet Stuff does not mess around. He starts by getting a special defense drop. 
Then he dodges a Hypnosis from Haunter and gets a critical hit Shadow Ball against Mimikyu on the next turn. Haunter manages to hit a Hypnosis, but there's really nothing that can be done at this point. I stockpile until I wake up to avoid damage from Haunter's Sucker Punches, and then once Sweet Stuff is awake, I go for a Shadow Ball. Haunter does connect with a weak Sucker Punch, which activates Sweet Stuff's Cute Charm, and then he finishes off the Mimikyu with a third Shadow Ball. And then, on the next turn, Haunter misses yet another Hypnosis, so Sweet Stuff knocks it out in one shot with a final Shadow Ball, winning us the 6th Island Challenge. What a debut performance from Sweet Stuff. With that, the level cap is finally high enough to evolve Love Bug into Lorantis, so I do that immediately. Grass-type doesn't have a great matchup into most of the major fights in this game, but it's cool that we get to use yet another Pokémon that I've never used before. Then I get my chance at my fourth and final Bruxish, but somehow I lose that 50% coin flip for the fourth time in a row, and this one also has Dazzling. So I just catch him and name him Kiss Me. Welcome to the team, you ugly-ass Pokémon. What's next is a lot of Team Skull stuff in Poe Town, but for the sake of time, I'm cutting it. This gets me to the Ula Ula Grand Trial against Nanu, who is definitely the easiest of the Grand Island Trials for our team to deal with. I lead Cutie Pie into his Sableye, and after protecting on the first turn to avoid damage from Fake Out, a Moonblast destroys Sableye in one shot. Crocorock comes out next and will outspeed and threaten a potential kill with a critical hit Earthquake, but after protecting to scout out a move, it seems like he's just going for Swagger. So I stay in. Crocorock does end up going for Earthquake on the next turn, but we would have survived even with a crit. So a Moonblast also knocks out Crocorock in one shot. Last is a Lolan Persian, so I protect to avoid damage from Fake Out, and then I switch to Sweet Pea on a Power Gym. Since Persian only has special moves, it's pretty easy to just sit there and whittle away at it with Shadow Ball and stay healthy with Soft Boiled. Even Persian's Dark-type Z-move does basically nothing. In hindsight, it would have been smart to teach Sweet Pea something other than Shadow Ball, but whatever. There is literally nothing Nanu can do here besides just get an insane number of flinches with Dark Pulse, which doesn't happen. After many, 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 many turns, Persian falls, and the third Grand Trial is won. After that, I get my final encounter of the run, an Execute from Exeggutor Island. Now, because Exeggutor is not a pink Pokémon, I can't evolve Dream Big here, but he will still make an appearance in a little bit, mark my words. Next up is the final Grand Trial of Pawnee Island against Hapu. This one is a little weird because Hapu's Pokémon are well over the level cap of the next Island Trial Totem in Bass Pawnee Canyon, so I do have to do this fight pretty underleveled. Fortunately, our team is pretty well equipped to handle her. She leads with Dugtrio, and I lead with Kiss Me. Dugtrio sets up a Sandstorm, but thankfully, Kiss Me is still able to connect with an Aqua Tail for the one-shot. Mudsdale comes out next, so I try to use Protect on her Z-move, but he just goes for Earthquake. So I switch to Soulmate. And then Hapu ends up wasting her Ground Z-move into Soulmate, who is immune to it. From here, I hit Mudsdale with a Feather Dance. And then he goes for Double Kick, for some inexplicable reason. Heavy Slam would do way more damage here. I hit another Feather Dance, and more Double Kicks. Okay, whatever. The Sandstorm resides, and then I use Roost to heal back some HP. And then I just start hitting Air Slashes. I make sure to stay healthy with Roost, since Mudsdale does occasionally go for Heavy Slam. I also eventually realize that using Revelation Dance is stronger than Air Slash, and it's 100% accurate, so I switch to using that. Whoops. It takes a while to knock her out since Hapu heals, but since Mudsdale refuses to consistently go for Heavy Slam, we take him out without much of a problem. Next is Gastrodon, so I switch to Sweet Pea on a Muddy Water. Then I set up a Sunny Day as Gastrodon goes for another Muddy Water, both of which lower my accuracy. So I switch out to Love Bug, who dodges a Mud Bomb, and then I knock out the Gastrodon with a Leaf Blade on the next turn. Last for Hapu is Flygon, but this Flygon is purely special for some reason, so I do possibly the worst thing that I've ever had to do to a Flygon. I switch in Sweet Pea, and then watch as Toxic slowly and painfully kills Flygon. Apu does use a full restore here, which is super stupid, but there's nothing she can do as I just Toxic it again. Sweet Pea is just too broken. Why this Flygon isn't at least a mixed attacker is beyond me, but if there's a guaranteed way to win this fight, I'm gonna take it. Anyways, that is the fourth and final Grand Trial defeated. Next up is the final island trial against the Totem Komo'o in Vast Pawnee Canyon. But for the first time in this challenge, this trial is insanely easy. After tanking a very strong Sky Uppercut, Cutie Pie is able to just one-shot the Komo'o with a single Moonblast. What an absolutely disgusting move. With that, it's now Dream Big's time to shine bright. For starters, Dream Big is the only one of my Pokémon that can learn Thief, which means that I can finally head back to Route 1 and find a Munchlax and Thief off a of Leftovers, which will now make my bulky Pokémon even bulkier. Theoretically, I could get as many leftovers as I want here, but I decide to just take one. Then, we have to head into Ultra Space or whatever to fight Tentacle Lusamine, and Dream Big is coming along for the ride. With an Eviolite and max HP and defense EVs, he's actually a fairly decent physical wall. But I lead with Kiss Me into Tentacle Lusamine's Clefable and start hitting it with Psychic Fangs. 
This gets a little scary because after a cosmic power, Clefable is able to heal more with Moonlight than we can dish out with Psychic Fangs. But thankfully, she gets a little greedy and goes for a Moonblast, so we're able to just barely knock out the Clefable with another Psychic Fangs. Then Lilligant comes out, who is easily Tentacle Lusamine's scariest Pokemon since it gets a plus one boost to its special attack. After a Protect, I switch to Sweet Pea as Lilligant generously misses a Leech Seed. Then she goes for a Teeter Dance, but Sweet Pea is able to break through and hit a Toxic, putting Lilligant on a timer. Then I switch to Dream Big as Lilligant hits a useless Leech Seed and takes Poison Damage. Then I go for a Protect for more Toxic Damage. Then I switch back to Sweet Pea, who takes a massive amount of damage from a Petal Dance, but Lilligant is now taking a ton of damage from Poison. So another turn of Protect puts Lilligant in the red. And then Lilligant just goes for a Teeter Dance. And Sweet Pea even breaks through the confusion to hit a Soft Boiled, meaning that she's at full health as the Lilligant succumbs to Toxic Damage. Next up for Tentacle Lusamine is her Beware. Now, it is completely and 100% safe to switch to Cutie Pie here, who is holding a Chillin' Berry and can one-shot this thing with Moonblast. But I want to give Dream Big a chance to make an impact. So I switch him in as Beware uses Pain Split, which just straight up causes her to lose health. On the next turn, she uses Pain Split again, which causes her to lose more health, and then Dream Big hits a Sleep Powder. And then Dream Big manages to two-shot this Mother Fluffer with Psychic as the dumb thing just sleeps. Miss Magius is next, but as with most special attackers, we switch to Sweet Pea and then kill it with a combination of Toxic and Shadow Ball. It's a bit more annoying to do this time because Miss Magius has Pain Split, but with some smart healing and protecting, she goes down relatively quickly. Last is Milotic, who does have access to Flail and a plus one attack boost, so I switch into Dream Big as the Milotic uses Safeguard. Then Milotic misses a Hydro Pump as Dream Big sets up a sunny day. Somehow, Dream Big has managed to go up against three of Tentacle Lusamine's Pokemon and not take any damage. What a god. I switch to Lovebug, who still takes a solid amount from a Hydro Pump in the sun. Then she tanks another one and one-shots the Milotic with a Leaf Blade on the next turn, winning us the battle. With that, Lusamine becomes much less interesting to certain parts of the internet, and we've saved the day. All that's left to do is head to the newly formed Elite Four and become champion of the Alola region. There are final fights with Gladion and Howe here, but they aren't super difficult, so I'm just gonna skip them. So here's our final team leveled up to level 55 to match the strongest Pokemon of each of the Elite Four members. It took me a while to figure out which six Pokemon I wanted to bring, but I think that these six give me the best chance at dealing with whatever the Elite Four and the Champion fight have in store for us. Let's see if they've got what it takes. First up, I choose to fight Hala, who is by far the easiest of the Elite Four members. He leads Hariyama and I lead Cutie Pie, who uses Protect to avoid damage from a Fake Out on turn one. Then a Moonblast does a huge chunk of damage to Hariyama, who then retaliates with a very strong close combat. But a Draining Kiss finishes off the Hariyama on the next turn, and gets Cutie Pie back a ton of health. Next up is Crabominable, but Moonblast is a quick and dirty one-shot. Third is Polyrath. A Moonblast won't kill here, and a Waterfall Crit could be bad, so I just one-shot it with our Fairy Z-move, which is my way of not just using workup strats to do this fight. After that, it's Primeape who misses a Cross Chop, and then we one-shot it with Moonblast. Last is Beware, but it too falls to a single Moonblast. With that, the first Elite Four member is defeated. Next up, I go for what I think is the next easiest Elite Four member, Acerola. She leads with a Sableye, and I lead Cutie Pie, who seemingly always has to start the battle by using Protect to dodge a Fake Out. Unfortunately, Acerola has maxed out her Sableye's speed EVs, so it outspeeds us and hits a critical hit Shadow Claw before going down to a Moonblast. That kinda sucks. Second is Frostlast, so first I Protect to waste a PP of Blizzard, and then I switch to Sweet Pea, but Frostlast hits a Confuse Ray. Frostlast then goes for an Ice Shard, which does a huge chunk of damage since Blissey's defense is so low. We're able to get off a Shadow Ball, which drops Frostlast's special defense, but because of how much damage Ice Shard does, and our confusion, it's not safe to stay in here. So I switch to Kiss Me, whose dazzling ability makes him immune to Ice Shard. I guess that lack of strong jaw was a blessing in disguise. This lets me switch between Sweet Pea and Kiss Me without taking any damage until Frostlast completely runs out of Confuse Ray PP. Once she's out, I'm able to tank an Ice Shard with Sweet Pea and knock out the Frostlass with a Shadow Ball. Next up is Delmise, which is a pretty big problem since most of our Pokemon are either physically frail, weak to grass type moves, or a Milt Tank which can't do much damage. But I start with a switch to Say Yes, who tanks a Slam. Then I go for a Protect and see that Delmise is going for Whirlpool. Not ideal, since that would trap me in and Say Yes's only move that damages Delmise is Bulldoze. So I switch to Love Bug, who gets hit by a hard Slam. Then I go for a Protect and see that Delmise is going for Shadow Ball. I stay in and hit a Leech Life, which does some damage, and then I kinda tank a Shadow Ball. I'm dead to a critical hit here, but I need more damage on this thing, so I go for another Leech Life and thankfully survive a second Shadow Ball. Now I switch back to Say Yes, who is immune to a Shadow Ball. And then I go for a Protect and see that Delmise is now gunning for Energy Ball, which is good. 
I hit Del Mise with a bulldoze for just a bit of chip, and then it goes for a slam. So I milk drink, and then Del Mise goes for energy ball. Then it's bulldoze for a little bit more chip, and then Del Mise goes for whirlpool. So now I'm stuck. All that I can do is stay in and click milk drink and protect until I'm free of the whirlpool. Thankfully, Del Mise doesn't get any critical hits or special defense drops with energy ball. So once I'm free from the whirlpool, I can now switch to cutie pie. This is super scary because if Del Mise goes for slam, cutie pie goes down. But thankfully they go for energy ball, so cutie pie tanks it. Then, thanks to the chip from Bulldoze, Del Mise is now in range for cutie pie to be able to kill them with a shadow ball. That was pretty scary. Next is Palosand, but thankfully Sweet Pea handles it just fine, since she's purely special. Toxic and Shadow Ball finish it off as we stay healthy with Leftovers and Soft Boiled. We'll skip this as I understand that it's probably as tedious to watch as it is to edit, but you know, if it ain't broke. So last is Drift Blim, but it only has a ghost move, so it's completely safe for Sweet Pea to knock this thing out. It does take forever because Drift Blim uses Amnesia and Acerola heals twice, but again, we can just skip to the finishing blow. With that, Acerola has been defeated, and we're halfway through the Elite Four. Next up is Olivia, who is much more manageable than Acerola. She leads with a max speed EV's Relicanth, and I lead with Lovebug. Relicanth is able to outspeed and hit a yawn, but then Leaf Blade one-shots him in return. Second for Olivia is a Lowland Golem, so I switch to Say Yes on a Steamroller. And then I hit a times 4 Bulldoze, which does way less damage than I thought it would. But it doesn't really matter, since Golem doesn't hit that hard in return. Two more bulldozers finish it off as my citrus berry activates to keep me relatively healthy. Lycanroc is next, so I go for a milk drink. And thankfully I do, because Lycanroc goes for his rock Z move, which Say Yes now manages to survive. A critical hit there would have been really bad though. But now I can just protect and milk drink to stall out Lycanroc of its 5 stone edge PP. And once I do, it's now much safer to start plugging away with bulldoze, as Lycanroc now needs to rely on crunch for damage. He also does have counter though so I decide to switch to True Love as he does indeed go for a counter. Then Lycanroc hits a weak rock climb, which fortunately doesn't confuse. So we hit a Scald, which luckily manages to get the burn. Or rather, unluckily, because the burn brings Lycanroc into the red, so Olivia heals. But Scald is a two-hit kill, so after tanking another crunch, Lycanroc goes down. Fourth is Probopass, so I switch to Love Bug as it sets up a Sandstorm. On the next turn, I hit her with a hard Brick Break, and then Probopass uses Thunder Wave. So she outspeeds me on the next turn to hit a weak power gem, but then Lovebug breaks through paralysis and knocks her out with a second brick break. Last is Carbink, who may be one of my favorite Pokemon, but is not particularly great at dealing damage. Carbink sets up a reflect, and then Lovebug gets fully paralyzed. So I switch to Kiss Me, who tanks a Moonblast, and then he uses Psychic Fangs to break the reflect. Another Moonblast puts Kiss Me in range of a critical hit, but I stay in to hit a Wide Lens Aqua Tail anyways, which leaves Carbink in the red as they just set up another reflect. Olivia heals, so Kiss Me uses another Psychic Fangs to break the Reflect. And then, another Aqua Tail gets a high roll and knocks out the Carbink, winning us the fight. Last for the Elite Four is Kahili and her dumb birds. By far the hardest member of the Elite Four for our team to deal with, mainly because of her incredibly strong 2 cannon. She leads with Skarmory, and I lead with True Love. Skarmory hits a weak Steel Wing and gets the defense boost, and then True Love comes out swinging with a critical hit Scald. Skarmory then sets up a very inconvenient layer of spikes before we're able to take her down with a second Scald. Next is the aforementioned Toucanon, who has Skill Link and Bullet Seed, meaning it has a 125 base power grass move to hit True Love with. So I switch to Say Yes, who takes a good bit of damage from the spikes and all 5 hits of Bullet Seed. On the next turn, I protect to scout out a flying Z move, but he just goes for a Beak Blast. So I heal with Milk Drink on the next turn. And then Kahili goes for her Z move. Say Yes is pretty tanky but not tanky enough to survive a critical hit. So after being so clutch in so many battles, Say Yes falls, and we lose our fourth soul. This is really, really bad. Miltank was easily our best answer to Toucanon, who now has the potential to pretty easily wipe the rest of my team, unless I'm very, very careful. I spend the next 10 minutes just staring at the screen, trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to not wipe to this Fruit Loops mascot. Two Cannon has max attack and speed EVs, meaning that this thing hits hard and surprisingly fast. The good news is that Beak Blast does always go last. The bad news is that none of my Pokemon are able to one-shot this thing. Maybe True Love is, but she obviously gets outsped and killed by Bullet Seed. Cutie Pie just barely survives a non-critical hit Beak Blast, and Moon Blast is a two-hit kill, but Two Cannon can then just outspeed on the second turn and finish off Cutie Pie with a Rock Blast or Bullet Seed if the AI chooses to do that. Alternatively, I could bring in Lovebug, sack her to get off a Toxic, and then hope that with Toxic damage, Toucanon goes down to a single Moonblast. 
Kiss Me may also be able to get a big hit in before going down to a potential bullet seed, though the AI's decision-making process with multi-hit moves is really weird. I also need to think about who is least useful against the champion fight, assuming I don't wipe here. I decide to go with bringing in Cutie Pie and praying that Toucanon doesn't get another critical hit with Beak Blast, and that he goes for Beak Blast on the second turn instead of just killing us with Rock Blast. But then, Toucanon just goes for a Screech. Terrible AI for the win. This lets me get off a Moon Blast, which does over half health. And then Toucanon goes for a Beak Blast, allowing me to finish it off with a second Moon Blast before it ever gets an attack off. Next for Kahelia's Mandibuzz. It'd be nice to hit this thing with a Moon Blast, but with minus two defense from Screech, I gotta switch out to True Love, who gets hit by a Flatter. I decide to stay in here, so I get hit by a Soft Brave Bird, despite this thing having access to Bone Rush, since I think AI calcs potential damage from multi-hit moves as the damage from just one single hit. True Love does hit herself in Confusion this turn, but that's okay. On the next turn, Mandibuzz uses Brave Bird again, and then True Love connects with a Power Gem, which does a huge chunk of damage thanks to the Flatter special attack boosts. Still no Bone Rush from Mandibuzz, as True Love snaps out of Confusion and heals with Recover. Then, Mandibuzz just goes for one more Brave Bird, and a second Power Gem finishes it off. Fourth for Kahelia's Oricorio, but after it uses an Air Slash, plus two Power Gem devastates Oricorio and knocks it out. Last is Crobat, but it just misses a Supersonic, and then Power Gem just barely doesn't get the kill. So, we do have to sit through Kahili using two full restores, and then Crobat does manage to hit a Supersonic, but True Love is just too powerful, and she breaks through the confusion to win us an insanely stressful Final Elite Four fight. Kahili with the absolute throw of the century. That now gets us to the throne room, where I can sit and look upon my kingdom, but there's one more fight before I'm officially champion, and that's against none other than Professor Kakui, who frankly has a very scary and very well-balanced team. He leads Lycanroc, and I lead Lovebug. Lycanroc outspeeds to set up Stealth Rocks, but then a Leaf Blade finishes him off. One down. Next up is Braviary, so I switch to True Love, who tanks a Brave Bird. Then I go for a Protect for more Leftovers recovery, and annoyingly, Braviary goes for a Whirlwind. I get punished for Protect stalling, I guess. Lovebug comes out and takes Stealth Rocks damage. Okay, so now I kinda have to just take this thing out as quickly as possible. So I switch back to True Love and tank another Brave Bird. Thanks to the Stealth Rock damage, I'm now at risk to a critical hit Brave Bird here, but I just have to risk it. Braviary mercifully sets up a pretty useless Tailwind, and then True Love uses Recover to get back to almost full health. Then I hit a Power Gem as Braviary goes for a Whirlwind, which forces Kiss Me out. I protect once with Kiss Me as Braviary goes for a Brave Bird. So I switch back to True Love again, who tanks yet another Brave Bird. Braviary then sets up another Tailwind, and I knock out the last problematic bird of the run with one final Power Gem. Incineroar comes out next so I immediately stall out a turn with Protect. I see he's going for Cross Chop, so it's relatively safe to switch to Kiss Me here, but I don't want to accidentally switch in on a Darkest Lariat, and thanks to Tailwind, we don't outspeed right now anyways. So I bring in Lovebug, who hangs on from a Cross Chop. And with that, Lovebug has done her job. Incineroar then uses a Fire Z move to torch our sweet little plant. Seems like a little bit of overkill, but either way, Lovebug was going down. This gives us a safe switch into Kiss Me, who, now that Tailwind has expired, is able to outspeed and finish off Incineroar with a Z-move of his own. Next up is Magnazone, so it's time for Sweet Pea to do her thing. Unfortunately, I do switch into a Thunder Wave, so now I'm dealing with Paralysis. Also unfortunately, Magnazone can't be hit by Toxic, so I have to just go for Bulldozes, which don't do much, but it is something. I then proceed to get some of the most mind-numbingly frustrating luck I've ever gotten. Magnazone immediately gets a critical hit with Thunderbolt, and it feels like I'm paralyzed almost every other turn. Sweet Pea does have Natural Cure, so the Paralysis would be healed if I switched out, but nothing I have left handles a Thunderbolt very well, and the Stealth Rock's damage on the switches makes that super unideal anyways. Kakui also uses a full restore when Magnazone falls into the red, so this is a pretty maddening battle. But I guess that is what I get for cheesing so many fights with Blissey. Although with Say Yes the Mill Tank getting assassinated by Toucan Sam, I didn't really have any other options here. Eventually, Magnazone runs out of Thunderbolt PP and starts going for Flash Cannons, which of course drop my special defense twice in a row. So I do have to switch out to Kiss Me here, who tanks a Flash Cannon and mercifully connects with an Aqua Tail to knock out the Magnazone. Next up is Snorlax. I just go for a Psychic Fangs for a bit of damage, and then Snorlax knocks out Kiss Me with a Crunch. I'm down to just three Pokemon now. This Snorlax knows high horsepower, so True Love can't reliably wall him right now. So I have to bring in Cutie Pie who gets off a Moon Blast before taking a Heavy Slam thanks to a Babiri Berry. Then I just launch off a Baby Doll Eyes to lower Snorlax's attack, and then Cutie Pie sadly goes down. So it's all up to True Love and Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea is completely useless here though into this physical attacker, so really it's up to True Love to finish this thing off before it kills us with a critical hit high horsepower. 
so I do my best to stall with Protect and Recover and fire off Scalds whenever it is relatively safe to do so. This Snorlax has max special defense EVs, so it takes very little damage from Scald. But fortunately, Scald has a very decent chance to burn Snorlax, which it thankfully does, since that now halves the damage that Snorlax can do. Unfortunately, Kukui has a full restore, so it gets pretty scary again until we manage to induce another burn. And so, it's just an absolute slog to slowly take this thing out with burn damage and Scalds slash power gems while remaining healthy with recover. This takes so long. In the moment, I struggled to remember a time in my life when I wasn't fighting this Snorlax. Desperately clicking Bulldoze into that Magnezone felt like a lifetime ago. I was beginning to think that I would never know peace, until Snorlax finally falls into the red for the second time. But right when I think it's over, Kukui, that bastard, reveals that he has a third freaking full restore. I cannot properly express the frustration I felt watching Snorlax's HP bar fill all the way back up. If I wipe to this thing, it will likely be the last time I ever play Sun and Moon. But fortunately, we managed to avoid critical hits long enough for us to burn Snorlax a third and hopefully last time. So, after another attempt at the seemingly Sisyphusian task of bringing this big dumb idiot into the red, Kukui appears to be out of full restores, letting us finally finish off the Snorlax. This brings Kukui to his final Pokemon, an Alolan Nene Tails, who uses her first turn to set up a safeguard, letting True Love hit a hard power gem. And so, on the next turn, True Love successfully tanks a Dazzling Gleam, retaliates with a high roll power gem, and knocks out the Nene Tails winning us one of the most grueling final battles I have ever had, and finishing the run. That was an absolutely exhausting challenge. Between the early game purgatory and the marathon fights in the late game, I'm not sure I've ever felt quite this relieved to be done with a challenge. Sun and Moon are not my favorite games, but they certainly are interesting and have a fair number of really difficult sections. Even though I was put through the ringer, I did still have a lot of fun playing through parts of these games again. It was tiring, but so rewarding. In a way, the perfect challenge for a Valentine's Day themed video. Oh wait, before we close out this video, there is one more thing we still need to do. Rising Star Tatiana's Reign of Tyranny ends now. Eat sh**, Patillo. Anyways, let me know what you think about these color challenges and whether I should do more of them. Until then, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe. Or don't. I don't know, but I do know that you should follow me on Twitter and Twitch to keep up with streams of my future challenges. And be sure to check out my new highlights channel, Flag on HG Highlights, as well as the Flag on HG Community Discord where you can discuss Nuzlocking and make recommendations for future challenges. The links are all in the description below. Stay tuned for more Nuzlocke videos, and until then, remember to always, always, always play around the critical hit.